ask him. Come into my garden. Come, let us sit for a while. Laughing, singing together in the garden of my heart. Oh, laughing, singing together in the garden of my heart. Dancing too. Laughing, singing together in the garden of my heart. Awake, north wind, blow on me, south wind. Blow on my garden, blow on my garden. Spread its fragrance everywhere. Spread its fragrance everywhere. Come into my garden. Come into my garden. Come, taste and see the fruit of my love that I have grown for you in my garden. In my garden. In my garden. Oh, it's good to be here. Um, tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, that very few people know. Deborah hasn't hasn't known me very long, but I think in terms of comedy, 24/7, every moment of the day. There there are jokes happening everywhere, um, especially at disservices. I was a teacher for 17 years, so I've been delivered, and um, yeah, so. Um, I have studied comedy since I was seven years old. Um, the prophetic, I started studying 1996, and that has been my main field of study since then. And I made it a point to um, try to listen to a teaching almost every day. Uh, some of those that came before me that I studied from, John Paul Jackson, Lester Summerall, um, Roberts Lairdon, uh, my own pastor, Jim Benita, and, and the list goes on. Um, you know, earlier when I was watching Chad and I saw him pick up the microphone, the first thought that came to me was, if you were a fan of Saturday Night Live, um, Bill Murray played a character, a lounge singer. I don't know if you remember that. And I thought, um, the song from The Love Boat. <laughs> the Love Boat, exciting and new, climb aboard, we're expecting you. Um, and I asked the Lord, Lord, why, why, why did that song come to me? And I hear him saying that uh, for some of you here and some of you that are watching the replay, you have been missing out on love. And you have been saying, Lord, when is love going to come into my life? And the Lord is saying, I am here. I am here. I am here to impart to you the love that you have been missing. And he's saying, come to me. Come to me and I will give you that love. Um, before we get too far, um, I do have a word for someone and I feel that the Lord wants me to already share that. Um, I've recently been learning, you know, like um, comedy affected me for so many years in that as soon as I put together a joke, I would just blurt it out. 
and um, comedy and the prophetic being a little bit alike in that they can bro both bring healing. However, comedy can bring injuries if it's used the wrong way. So I've recently been learning in the, in the prophetic that um, it's always good to check with the Lord. Well, when do you want to give the word, Lord? It's not my word. It says, when do you want it? So, ma'am, I have to ask you, what is your name? Ava. Ava. Um, you know, when you were worshiping the Lord at the beginning, um, I, I could see the Lord. I couldn't see his face too well. But um, you were entertaining his presence. And he was so... He loved it so much. And um, I could see the emotion inside of him. He was so overjoyed with, with your pure worship. And I saw you inside your house. I don't know if this is right, but I saw you inside your house um, sometime before you were going to begin your study for the day, your Bible study. And I saw you... Um, engaging in worship before you studied the word and um, the Lord was just so overwhelmed and enjoyed that so much uh, there was a real thick presence as you were worshiping him earlier um, and I I saw that he wants to do something for you um, you have grandchildren and I saw um, one of your grandchildren as a, a child a teenager a young adult, and this um, boy has a, a mathematical gifting, and I believe it's carried over from you, um, uh, something that you didn't get to use. And I saw as he was uh, sleeping at night, formulas were coming to him, layered upon layered upon layered. I never attained a very high mathematical um, classes. But I believe that this person, the Lord is going to reveal to him deep truths mathematically um, that are going to solve hidden riddles. And I am reminded of, um, I believe his name is R.T. Letourneau. Uh, World War II, and the government needed an earth-moving machine, and they had given... Uh, several companies the opportunity to make it and they said okay we need this earth moving machine we need a prototype within one year and then we need it to go into production shortly thereafter and all the production companies said well that's impossible but one man said okay I accept the challenge in the night he had a dream and in his dream he received the blueprint for that machine that was R.T. Letourneau. The machine that he developed was the front loader. Um, he was so wealthy that he lived on 10% of his income and gave away 90%. And even with only retaining the 10%, he was a multi, 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 multi millionaire. So um, the Lord wants to encourage you that. He relishes he lives outside of time he can already see the future and he relishes watching you watch your grandchildren especially that grandchild use that gifting yeah. uh, amen amen so um, I was a teacher for 17 years I it's Difficult for me to teach without notes. Our pastor Dennis and Chris have no notes. They go up there and they can speak, and especially Dennis, he'll say, okay, this message is on, and it's got seven points, and here's the first point, and here's all the scriptures. And, and even more amazing is he says, I, I get this teaching in sometimes 10 minutes. Um, so I worked on these notes for a little bit longer than a week. And um, so the title, Guide, Speak, and Show, um, the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, 13, he will guide, speak, and show. And, and I, I do have that scripture on there. But um, we'll start off with Hebrews 3.10. 
Um, this is the complete Jewish Bible. It says, therefore, I was disgusted with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not understood how I do things. So, you know, as we've been talking earlier, and, and I heard um, um, Chad um, praying for people, and um, if I'm not mistaken, um, one of the prayers were, was for someone to be able to um, know what it is that the Lord wants them to do on a continuous basis. And that scripture is showing us that he does want us to understand what he's doing. He has a good plan for us. Um, Psalm 139, 16, I saw you when you were in your mother, before you were in your mother's womb, I ordained your days and I wrote them in a book. So he wants us to complete what is written in that book. You know, I found in, that, in my own life that many times the Lord has done some things the same way. And for example, when I left several jobs, it was always because of pressure. Things just started getting worse and worse and worse at the job. And I'm the kind of person, well, I'll stick it out. It's a little bit longer. And when I left from working at, at Foot Locker, then when I left from teaching at the first campus, and then the second campus, and the third campus, um, and then from my previous job working at a real estate office, things just, he was pushing me out um, because I was a person, again, that I'll just stay there. Lord, if it's tough, I'll just find a way. And he was saying, no, your, your time there, what you have learned, uh, I realize now that he had me become a teacher so that I could be here today. Um, and, you know, you, you, you think about... Uh, people that have passed away or are getting close to passing away and they'll always say something like, I wouldn't change a thing. I would change a lot of things. Or take out a pen. Hope you have a lot of paper. Um, new vehicles. Um, the two vehicles that I uh, recently purchased, well, over the past 20 years. Um, the first one, Somebody pulled out in front of me, no insurance. So I had to get a, another vehicle because that one was total. Then I had that one, somebody pulled out in front of me, no insurance. Got another one. So now I'm praying, Lord, just every day, Lord, send your angels out ahead of me. Remove the people and the animals from the way. That way we'll, we'll all be safe. Oh. And the Lord wants to do the same thing for you in terms of knowing what it is that he wants to do next in your life. Um, Hebrews 3.10, this is the Amplified Classic. And um, in blue it says, uh, They have not perceived or recognized my ways and become progressively better and more experimentally and intimately acquainted with them. Um, I am reminded of... Um, Isaiah 11.2 that speaks of the seven spirits of the Lord. Um, I forget the gentleman's name that uh, teaches on it, but um, he gave a, a really good definition that they are um, the seven attributes, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So um, you have the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. And so, um, you know, we are comprised, each person, all of us, we're comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The soul being the mind, will, and emotions. And each day, you know, we need to set ourselves up to hear from the Lord. Um, so each morning as I take my dog for a walk, I say the same prayer, and that is, I ask the Lord to touch me with his seven spirits. And so my prayer goes something like this. Um, Lord, today I, I ask that you touch me by um, your spirit of the fear of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel. Oh, well, yeah, it, it, it'll be recorded. Uh, uh, spirit of might, spirit of knowledge. And the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah, so this is Isaiah 11, 2. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so touch me by your seven spirits. And uh, 
what is the right word? Anoint my spiritual and physical minds and emotions. Because you know we have a spiritual mind, we have a physical mind, we have spiritual senses and physical senses. It is your spiritual sense that connect with the physical senses when you um, are understanding, capturing the aromas of the Lord. How many of you have ever, ever had that happen? You've, you've smelled the aromas of the Lord. And, and conversely, you can smell the aromas of the enemy. And so I ask the Lord by his seven spirits to anoint my spiritual minds and emotions so that I can receive all that the Holy Spirit is communicating to me. Um, I ask that my heart would be receptive to his good word, that the eyes of my heart would be open, and that my whole being would be anointed to bring him glory and honor. Um, you know, our... Um, the eyes of our heart need to be ready to receive because many times he does not speak to us in the ordinary. And I call those Job 33, 14 moments. And I'll get to that scripture here in a minute. Um, on your notes, I left off uh, right at that spot after the, the Amplified Classic, um, the voice translation. So the voice translation of Hebrews 3.10, the key words are, they don't know what I want from them. They don't know what I want from them. God wants you to know what he wants from you. Are we missing a paper over here? Everyone has a paper? Yes? Okay. Okay, good. Um, and I want to share a couple of true stories. Uh, many times when the Holy Spirit speaks to me about giving a word to somebody, he comes as a whisper. And he'll say, Matthew, you know what I want you to do? And oftentimes it comes as an interruption when I'm right in the middle of things. <laughs> you know, when Jesus was walking to various places, remember him being interrupted? He was with a group of people, and a lady came and pulled on his, the, the fringes of his garment, and she was healed. That came as an interruption. Um, so true story. When I was uh, a teacher, I was on my way to pick up my class from, you know, my conference time. They're at PE, I think. And I hear the Lord say, I want you to go give Miss Garcia a word. And I explained to him, Lord, I got two minutes to make it all the way down to the other side of the campus. And <laughs> And you know, the Lord is just standing there. Mm, you know. All right, go upstairs. So I go up there, and um, I, I, she was one of the registrars, I think. But anyways, people always there, always there at her, um, what do you call it? Um, the glass partition for her place. No one's there. And I say, hey, Miss Garcia, the Lord told me to tell you the words come out, her eyes fill up with tears. And I run downstairs, go get my class. She calls me later and says, Mr. Graham, that word was so right on. I needed to hear that. Thank you so much. Um, one day, when I was working at a real estate office in Bernie, um, I, I wasn't a uh, a real estate agent. I just pushed papers. And that was the culmination of a prophetic word given to me 12 years before that I would be there. Um, last Sunday, Dennis gave me a prophetic word and said, Matthew, it's time to come out of the shadows. And then I got the call to come here two days later. And I said, man, that's the kind of prophetic words I like. None of this waiting around for 12 years. Because when those prophetic words take a long time, I always think of Rodney Dangerfield from Caddyshack. Let's go while we're still young. So one day I hear a song on the radio, and the Lord asked me, what is that singer's nickname? And I said, oh, he's the boss. 
He says, this message is from the boss. I want you to go back and listen to that song. So I, I re-listened to it, and the Lord highlighted these words, and then he gave me a message. Um, the name of the song is Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen. And these verses go like this. In fact, I think I'm going down to the well tonight, and I'm going to drink till I get my fill. And I hope when I get old, I don't sit around thinking about it. But I probably will. Yeah, just thinking back, trying to recapture a little of the glory. Yeah. Well, time slips away and leaves you with nothing, mister, but boring stories of glory days. Well, they'll pass you by glory days in the wink of a young girl's eye. Glory days, glory days. And so, um, this is, thank you. This is what he told me. He said, the days that are to come will far surpass the previous. People long for the days of A.A. A. Allen, Amy Simple McPherson, Smith Wigglesworth, Catherine Coleman, William Branham. But the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Just like the wink of a young girl's eye, many will miss out because they will not be ready. So from that point on, I said, Lord, make me ready. Position me to be ready. I have discovered that in these 26 years of studying the prophetic, the more I study, I realize the less I know. And, you know, Chad had said a prayer for me that I would know what the prophetic really is. Um, how many of you are familiar with Sean Bowles? Yeah, so Sean Bowles, he'll, when he ministers, he'll say things like, hey, um, I was praying, and you, if you can picture a huge audience, um, uh, is there a Tony and a Maria here? Um, and I see a 525 Apple Street. Is that somebody here? And the person will stand up, and then he'll give them more words of knowledge. And then a, um, a prophetic word about the future. Uh, William Branham, when people would go up on stage, he would tell them, your name is, your address is. A month ago, you were talking with your brother who lives in, and you told him that if you came here, you would be healed from, and then he would name the disease, and they would get healed. He died in 1965, December uh, 24th, 1965. That gift has not been see seen since then. Um, I had another, another story to tell you. Uh, when I worked at that real estate office, one day I was going to pay a bill for my boss. And as I'm paying the bill and the girl is helping me and getting the receipt ready, um, I guess I should preface it with this. We have a lot of ladies here. Um, if Tom Selleck, Robert Redford, Brad Pitt, um, at Elvis, uh, at their prime, <laughs> Denzel Washington, if one of them walked in here and began speaking to you, would you get nervous? <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I had to preface that with this. So um, I'm in, the, in that particular office, and the girl that's waiting on me is extremely attractive. And I'm fumbling over words, you know. Okay, thank you. All right, I got my receipt. Okay, bye. Have a good day. And as I'm leaving, I hear the Lord say, when you get back to the office, you're going to call her, and you're going to tell her, blah, 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 blah. I said, Lord, I, I, I can't do that. Well, really? Well, why not? Well, I represent my pastor, my church, my wife, my boss. I don't want that woman to think that, you know, I'm, I'm hitting on her. And then he told me this. Earlier that day when I heard Glory Days, there was a second song, and he asked me, who's the 
uh, what is the nickname of that artist? And I said, the king. He said, that's right. This message is from the king. And at the moment that I finished telling him that I couldn't call, he quoted these verses from the song Suspicious Minds. Why can't you see what you're doing to me when you don't believe a word I have to say? We can't go on together with suspicious minds. So I get to the office, look up the number to that place. I call, she answers the phone. I said, hey, I was just in there. And uh, sometimes I hear from the Lord, and I felt that the Lord wanted me to tell you this. And I tell her, oh, my gosh, thank you for telling me that. That's, I, I really needed to hear that. I hung up the phone, immediately go to the bathroom, put water on my face. <laughs> I get home, I tell my wife, true story, I closed the blinds in the front of the, uh, the house. And I thought, okay. If I see no one else for the rest of the day, I, I can just be here in peace and not have to go give any words. So you never know what the Lord is going to have you do. But you know what? That's what he wanted me to do. Um, Hebrews 3.10, the voice, they did not know what I want from them. What did he want from me? My name is, is Matthew. And... Um, I had some neighbors, new neighbors down the street I was getting really perturbed with because they kept calling me Matt. Hey, Matt, how you doing, Matt? Hey, Matt. And so I had to tell them, hey, my name is not Matt, it's Matthew. Why, why do I find that important? Because Matthew means a gift from God. And each day I try to live my life as a gift from him to help people. So even though I, I constantly joke around coming here today, I took it extremely serious. And I said, Lord, you are sending me there to help people. I don't know very much, but I know a guy that knows a guy who knows a lot. I know the Holy Spirit, and he knows God, and God knows everything. Um, Hebrews 3.10, this is the Living Bible, and the key words there in yellow. Um, and they never found the paths I wanted them to follow. The paths I wanted them to follow. What if we spent our life doing something and at the end of our life um, we meet the Lord and we say, Lord, man, wasn't this so awesome that um, I did this, this, and this? Excuse me. And he says, I never called you to do that. Oh, but Lord, uh, yeah. your gift will make room for you. Uh, Proverbs 18:16, the complete Jewish Bible, a person's gift clears his way and gives him access to the great. Um, you know, one of the people I've recently been listening to, um, his name is um, Steve Harvey, and he's been, uh, you know, he teaches on um, inspiration, but I listened to a series of teachings about your gift, not what motivates you, but your gift. His gift is comedy. Um, uh, my, my two gifts, uh, one is comedy and the other is uh, the prophetic. I have a passion for golf, the drums, documentaries, and the NFL. But none of those passions are going to pay the bills. Uh, my other gift, let me get to that here. Um, when I was about 20 years old, I was at my mother's house cutting the grass. And I was right by the street, cutting the grass. This car pulls up, and the guy brings his window down. He goes, hey, um, how much do you charge to cut lawns? And I go, dude, I live here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And he drove off. Oh. And I was, I was offended. I'm like, you know, I don't mow lawns. I'm not a yard man. I, right. I live here. <laughs> and you know what? Um, when I was working at the real estate office, I was mowing the front of the office. And now I find the Lord speaking to me a lot when I'm working. And so I'm mowing. I'm sitting on the riding mower, mowing the grass. And I hear the Lord start speaking to me. And he said, at this time I was 53. He said, hey, remember when you were 20 years old and that guy? He, in an instant, I saw the, 
video play out. He goes, remember when that happened? I said, yeah, I do. He goes, I gave you a gift of manicuring lawns, and I sent that guy to you so that you could make some extra money, but you were too proud to be a yard man. So what do I do now? I have a landscaping business. And I got to tell you that I've had days recently where I drive to go get some of my equipment, and I think, man, I love my job. I love doing this. I'm outside. I see birds and trees, and I don't want to see any snakes. Occasionally I do. Um, and I'm never one of those people that if I see a snake, oh, let's go check it out. No, no, let's check it out with, you know, a shotgun or something. Um, so, again, your gift will make room for you, not your passion. And God has given each of us a gift. And with that gift, he asked Moses, well, what's that in your hands? Use that thing that's in your hands. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 from the Living Bible. Um, no mere man has ever seen, heard, or even imagined what wonderful things God has ready for those who love the Lord. And then verse 10, but, there's a but. We know about these things because God has sent his spirit to tell us. And his spirit searches out and shows all of God's deepest secrets. Amen. Somebody want a word? Somebody want a word? Oh, awesome. excellent. As I was preparing these notes, I, I heard the Lord tell me, God has something better for you. What? Yes, but you can't be complacent. You know, there's comfort in the known, even though that job is like a vacuum cleaner. Why do I say a vacuum cleaner? Or, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's how the vacuum picks up stuff. That's what it's just, just, that's just, just, just doing that, yeah. That's it. Um, you know that better job where you will love life and say, I love my job. It's going to require risk. Two, it's going to require trust in the Lord. Um, I now have somebody working for me uh, for my business, and he's told me, man, you got some good clients. You have some great clients. One of my clients, he lived in Paris for three years. Then he lived in Switzerland for two years and taught at the university where Einstein had worked at. And when he was in Paris, he found a nice bar from the 1800s, and he had it shipped to his current house and put inside his house. Um, and the point being, uh, as I trusted in the Lord to help me start this business, he brought me the clients that were not looking for a guy to mow the lawn. They were looking for a guy to manicure the lawn. I was telling somebody the other day, um, hey, I might not be the guy that you're looking for because if you're looking for somebody just to cut your grass, that's not me. I'll manicure your property and make it look like a million dollars, but... There's a difference. Uh, number three, this new opportunity is going to require learning new skills. Um, Isaiah 50, verse 4, I think uh, this might be the voice translation where it says, um, morning by morning he awakens me and gives me the right words to speak and everything I need to know. So in this job, there have been things that occur, and I'll tell the Lord, before I start, let's do this together. Help me to help me to beautify this property for this person. I, I need your help. I need your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Things will pop up, like with sprinkler systems, and the Lord will show me how to fix it. Um, number four, you're going to have to release the old. And number five, you're going to have to go into the unknown. But if God is taking you there, it's going to be good. Amen. Um, Hebrews 3.10, this is the message. Um, and the key words there in blue, uh, they'll never keep their minds on God. They refuse to walk down my road. 
He's got a road for each of us. Um, John 16, 13, now this is the key. So the Holy Spirit, what is his job to us? He will guide, speak, and show. Guide, speak, and show. Guide, speak, and show. Only one of those is auditory. The other two um, involve perception and seeing. So I ask the Lord each day, help me to perceive, hear, and see everything that the Holy Spirit is communicating to me. But how are we going to do that? So I'm, I'm here talking about the prophetic. Um, how many of you like the prophetic? Oh, excellent. I have found that the prophetic will either draw people towards you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, our friend Nancy here, um, we've known Nancy for like 20 years, something like that. So we went to the same church in Edinburgh, uh, Pastor Jim Vanita. And when I first started going there, um, you know, I wasn't fully cleaned up. And whenever I would see Pastor Vanita coming down the, through the church with a, the great prophetic gifting, I would literally turn and go the other way. And I go hide out in the bathroom <laughs> and say, okay, I think he's gone now. I'll come out. Um, yeah, so the prophetic. Um, but how are we going to learn the prophetic? We'll look at Hebrews 5.14. This is a tree of life version. It says, but solid food is for the mature who through practice have their senses trained to discern both good and evil. And when it says discern, it's not talking about one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, many times people say, oh, the gift of discernment. Um, in the original Greek, it's discernings, plural, discernings of spirits. So through discerning of spirits, um, Derek Prince, I think, gave the best definition for that. And he said, it's simply understanding what spirit you're encountering. Holy Spirit, demonic spirit, human spirit, the Holy Spirit. Um, so to discern, you got to practice got to practice. It reminds me of um, Alan Iverson was had a big press conference one time, a basketball player, and he's like, we're talking about practice. Um, but yeah, he was one of those guys. He didn't have to practice much basketball. He was already uh, an expert. Um, Hebrews 5.14, the complete Jewish Bible, and in yellow there, um, for those whose faculties have been trained by continuous exercise to distinguish um, and the Amplified Classic, it says, for full-grown men whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish. And so you might be asking, how did I get to where I am now? Well, through practice. And one of the first things I did to begin my relationship with the Holy Spirit and to hear His voice better was through practicing hitting golf balls. Um, I love golf. Uh, I, I won't be on the PGA, I'll tell you that. So, Yeah, unfortunately. But uh, so whenever I would go hit golf balls, they never went where I expected them to go. And so I would go to this place, and I would hit 10 balls, and then I'd go look for them. And oftentimes, I, I didn't find them all. So the Holy Spirit gave me an idea. Okay, hit 10, and then I would ask him, Lord, show me where the golf balls are. And I would, I would hear inside of me, okay, go forward. And I would go forward. Take, take three steps to your left. Okay, now five steps to your right. Now two to your left. And look down. Oh, there's a golf ball. And we did that over and over and over and over again. And I always found more golf balls than I hit. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? One of the other ways uh, that I developed a relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Lord, and all the men will go, yes, see what I told you, honey, is through watching the NFL. Okay. Amen. Yeah, 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 all right. I knew I could get an amen in the house. Um, so my favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys, um, Tom Landry from Mission, Texas. You know, a few people know this, but on the home games, 
Tom Landry showed up to the stadium minutes before kickoff. Why did he show minutes, show up at that time? Because he was teaching a Sunday school class and it was imperative that he did that class before being the coach. Um, yeah. So if you can believe this, as the Lord and I would watch the Cowboys play, I would hear the Holy Spirit tell me, don't get up. You're going to like this next play. The Cowboys get the ball back. Oh, yes. <laughs> or I would hear at the very beginning, I would ask the Holy Spirit, um, am I going to like this game? Uh, it's not going to go too well. And then they would lose. Um, but it was that relationship of hearing him speak to me during the game and telling me before events happen that they would happen. Um, and it wasn't for me to run out and say, i got to call my bookie and tell them that. No. It was so that relationship could be developed. Um, my wife and I used to watch House Hunters. Oh, my family, my wife Catalina, Catherine, Elizabeth. Um, we would watch House Hunters together, and we would, uh, if you're not familiar with that show, um, the people that go on there, it's a 30-minute program. They look at three houses, and then at the end, they say, okay, we chose this house. Um, and my wife and I would say, okay, um, I pick house number one, then they're going to pick, okay, house number three. But then I said, oh, wait a minute. You're talking to a prophetic guy, and I would silently ask, which one are they going to take? Uh, number two. And then I kept getting the answers right. And she'd say, wait a minute. That's not fair. Uh, the other day, I was playing Guess Who with my daughter. And before I started, I said, okay, Lord. Is her character... Is it male or female? Female. Okay, I get rid of all the males. Um, do they have glasses? Yes, get rid of all the ones that don't have glasses. So before we started, I had already gotten rid of, like, I don't know, lots. Yeah. And, you know, the other way that you can grow in the prophetic is prophetic activation classes. And, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of other things to share with you. The prophetic, excuse me, how does a prophetic operate? Um, it oftentimes comes as spontaneous thoughts that light up on your mind. It's spontaneous. And it often comes when you are not thinking about it. I can't tell you how many times, you know, we all have questions for the Lord. And you ask, Lord, I really need to know about this. I need to know. And we get ourselves stressed out. But it's at those times that you're doing something that involves no thought. Like, you know, you're driving down the road. You're doing what you need to do to think about that, yes. And the answer comes to you. Um, it often comes as an interruption. And many times it disagrees with your soul, mind, will, and emotions. Like how many times have you felt the Lord tell you, you see that person over there? I want you to go give them $50. Lord, that's the last 50 I have. Hey, look at them. They don't need that. What am I telling you to do? Oh. Or you get the thought, um, so-and-so, um, I should call that person. I'm like, nah, they're, they're not awake right now. The other day, I'm working on these notes, and uh, I heard the Lord real clearly say, I want you to send a message to Nicole. Okay, well, let me get up. No, stay seated and send it now. So I send her the message, and she gets back to me and says, Oh, my gosh. That is right on, and you sent it at exactly 3.13, and the scripture the Lord has been giving me this week is Hebrews 3.13. Um, you know, I didn't know any of that, but again, it comes as an interruption. It's a spontaneous thought. It doesn't agree with your mind, will, and emotions. Our mind, will, and emotions can say, you should have another piece of 
And the Holy Spirit, you know what? You don't need any more of that. Combine me out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I've often told the Lord, Lord, why do we have to go through all this, this training? Can we just have a Zoom meeting? Or better yet, how about a fundraiser? We could have brownies and, um, uh, what is that called? Um, the pie, the, um, help me out here, butter pecan pie. Lord, that's win-win. Everybody's happy, I'm happy, people are happy, and we don't have to prolong this agony. Um, Hosea 6.6, 6, the living Bible. I don't want your sacrifices, I want your love. I don't want your offerings, I want you to know me. The Lord is telling us that. I, wa I want you to know me. This is who I am. Uh, Job 33.14, um, the Amplified Classic. For God does reveal his will. He speaks not only once, but more than once, even though men do not regard it. Um, and then the Tree of Life version, God speaks once, even twice, yet no one perceives it. Um, so God can speak to you in abnormal ways. Anyone have strange things happen where you're like, wow, that was weird? Um, I take my dog for a walk each morning, and when we go for walks, many times I find the same object over and over and over again. So a couple months back, we're going for a walk, and I find a cotter pin. So the ladies probably don't know what that is. A cotter pin, if you were uh, pulling a trailer, you put the trailer hitch onto the back of the truck, and then you put a bolt through there, and then you put a little pin through that bolt to hold everything in place. If the cotter pin falls out, you still have the bolt in place, so it should be all right, unless you hit a bunch of bumpy roads. So I kept finding those. And I said, hmm, okay, Lord, this is weird. Um, and then I started finding the crown bolts. And then I found one that had it all connected. It had the cotter pin and the crown bolt connected as one. You could loop it over. And I said, Lord, what are you trying to say? And he said, what, does a, what do those objects do? And I said, well, they hold what you're towing in place. And he said, what happens if you lose them? Well, then everything's going to bust loose. And you're going to have some big problems. He said, that's right. What I'm telling you is things are about to bust loose in your life. The blessings that I have for you are about to become unhitched. So it was a short time thereafter that um, I had my largest landscaping uh, project where we moved about 10,000 pounds of rock into somebody's backyard. And the Lord gave me the idea to make a, a chute, to put all the rocks on a wooden chute and slide it down her, through her backyard. Um, another time, I... I don't remember how I did this. I think I sat on my glasses. Uh, no, you know what it was? For Somehow, uh, the right lens on my glasses popped out. And so I took it to the eyewear place to get fixed. And they put it back in place, and I'm driving back to the office, and I hear the Lord say, this was a physical manifestation of what's happening in the Spirit. You'll notice that it was your right lens that popped out. I am putting things back in proper order so you will see the right way or correctly. Um, so when strange things happen in your life, ask the Lord about that. Lord, why, why are you doing that? Why did I find that? Why did that happen? Um, how many of you have had instances where somebody comes to your mind in the middle of the day and you haven't thought of that person for years? How many of you call them? Yes. Amen. Amen. The next time that happens, go out on a limb and call them or text or messenger. Um, Matthew 13, 12 through 17, the passion, passion translation. For everyone who listens with an open ear will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But... 
Those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding that they think they have will be taken from them. That's why I teach people using parables, because they think they're looking for truth. Yet because their hearts are unteachable, to see they would have given everything to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear yeah the Lord is on that you know I've often um, we were all born for a specific time I'm thankful that I was not born at covered wagon days gosh oh man Woo. or the time before that you know I I like air conditioning in a refrigerator, yeah. My my girls have said, "Hey, let's go camping." I tell the babies, "I um, I paid the price, so we don't have to camp. We'll get a camper, but AC, nice bed at night, no bugs crawling on you. Yeah, right, running water, um, deodorant, cologne." <laughs> Yeah, um, Psalm 32, 8, the Tanakh version. I will lead you and guide you according to what my eyes have seen. What my eyes have seen. God lives outside of time. He knew what would happen today, uh, and he knew that he would compel you to be here. How many of you had to put something off to be here today? Oh, a couple people, amen, good. Um, well, I believe that... I have heard correctly that the Lord wants to minister to a couple people um, and that the Lord wants to give some words out today. How many are interested in receiving a word? Oh, amen, amen. Let me move this. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. One of the things that um, our pastor Dennis, Dennis Goldsworthy Davis, has taught us that, um, and also um, uh, Robert, Robert Henderson, um, that when you get a word, you pray it out, and you take it to heaven, and you remind the Lord, hey, you told me, you told me this. I'm waiting. I, I am ready to do my part, but you said this. You said it. It's not me. Um, so if, if this is all right, um, if we could form a line.